Yo, yo, yo. Last time we handled adding and removing participants to our poll in Redis, as well as making sure clients only communicate with other clients belonging to the same poll. Today, we're going to come up with a way to limit some events from being accessed except by admins. If you're thinking we can do this with another authorization guard, you nailed it. Since we've done this already, hopefully today's tutorial will be a little easier than the last few. And as always, you can go to my repository called Ranker Course, which unfortunately isn't popular. Come on, guys, give it a star. <laughs> then you can find instructions for getting started here. And we also have a tutorials folder, which has the scripts for these videos. They're not well polished, but they're good enough. Let's go ahead and add an admin guard and we'll name it similar to how we named this controller auth guard, except we'll call it gateway admin guard. We almost added a guard for all of our polls gateway, but remember that when we added guards, they do not work with handle connection here or handle disconnect, which was our other method right here. So we ended up working with this socket IO adapter where we ended up creating a token middleware. So go ahead and check out that tutorial if you want to see how to get access to authorization before you actually connect. Anyhow, to create a guard, we create a class which implements the can activate interface, which requires a can activate method. So check out this polls controller auth guard for an example. And I have another tutorial on that. It's very similar for web sockets. And these guards do work with the actual events that we're going to add to the polls gateway, even though they don't work with handle disconnect or handle connection. We make sure we do all our imports. It implements can activate, which has a can activate method. In general, can activate can return a Boolean, a promise of a Boolean, or an observable of a Boolean, but in this case, we know it will just be a promise. In our controller auth guard, we only needed access to the JWT service of NestJS, but in this case, we're actually going to reach out to our poll data, so we'll also inject the poll service. So at the top of the class, let's add a constructor, and let's also add a logger. So we'll bring that in from NestJS common, and then we need to import the types for the poll service and for the JWT service. With the poll service, we'll now be able to actually get the actual polls admin ID from the database and compare it with the poll ID in this sockets JWT token. So we'll parse the JWT token and then go to that poll, get the poll in the token, which returns the admin ID, and then we'll compare that admin ID with this sockets participant or user ID, we call it. I also want to add some typings to our JSON web token. And to do that, we just need to go to the polls type. And I want to make sure that we export this auth payload. So it existed before, but it was joined with other types. And so we just need to make sure to export it now. Let's now add the implementation for can activate. This will take a socket. And remember, on this context, to get access to the socket, we kind of have to tell it to switch to WebSockets and get client. There's my phone dinging. Let me silence it. And let's import socket with auth from types. And remember that we send the token in Postman on a header, though when we use the client, it will actually use the auth token. Maybe I should put this in a function because we've used it a few places. If there's not a token, we will log that there isn't one and throw an authorization exception, a WebSocket authorization exception, which we created a couple tutorials ago with a specific no token provided message. Now, if all is good, we're then going to try to parse the payload. And this method, if the token is expired or otherwise invalid, it will throw an error. So we put it in a try block. And then we're going to help with the types by using that auth payload we just exported. So let's import it. And then we're going to merge it with the subfield. And the subfield is part of the standard JSON web token claims. There probably exists a TypeScript type somewhere. If we maybe add the at types slash JSON web token types, we could probably import 
all of the fields on here, like the expiration date. But I just want to use the sub, which will end up having our user ID. So that just gives us some types of the payload. From this payload, we ex extract the user ID and poll ID. And then we're going to create a method to actually get the poll in our service, but we don't have this yet. And we'll compare the user ID, meaning the one that was extracted from the JSON web token, with the one in the actual poll. If all is good, we return true. And if we have an error extracting the token, or if the user ID doesn't match the poll ID, we will throw a WebSocket unauthorized exception saying admin privileges required. But let's go ahead and add this poll or get poll method. This is going to be pretty simple. Let's go to the poll service. And here at the bottom, we'll add the method. And basically, we'll say get poll by the poll ID, return a promise of a poll. And we already had a get poll method in our polls repository. And so we should be good to go with our admin auth guard. Let's now add a handler for an event which we'll call remove participant in our polls gateway. Now we've only added a few test handlers, including one called the test here, but it didn't really receive a payload. So let's create one now that only is accessible by admins and that can receive the ID of a user or participant that we want to boot out of the poll. So we'll just replace this test. And we're going to use guards here and we're going to use that gateway admin guard. And then we can also use the subscribe message to define the string that defines our message. So the client, when it wants to remove a participant, will call this. Or in other words, send a message with, with this string. Then to get an ID, we can use this at message body decorator. And to pull a particular field off of it, we say ID. Now we could just pass a string directly, but I'm going to pass it inside of an object. And then we can use this connected socket to get access to the client that is sending this message. So hopefully that is the admin or it will be the admin if they get past this guard. Let's import the guard. And we're ready to add the implementation. We'll just add a log saying that we're attempting to remove participant ID from a certain poll. And that's the ID that gets passed in the message. And then we'll update the poll and call remove participant. This is the same remove participant that we used last time. Then we will just emit the poll updated back to all the clients so they get an updated copy of the poll with the participant removed. Now there's one thing I probably should have done and I'll try to update the script is copy this if poll updated statement here and maybe you could just write something like poll updated and and then call this method but we'll just put it in an if block to be very clear and let me i copied and pasted but let's move this into here should have cut <laughs> i obviously don't know how to cut and paste so basically if the poll actually gets updated then we'll emit this poll updated method Notice here that I'm not going to actually remove the socket connection here. So it could be like the user went to another tab and their tab's still open and maybe they try to reconnect before the poll is started. So I'm not actually going to like find their socket ID and forcibly remove them, but they will no longer be in the database. We're now going to test this in Postman. I've started up the app with npm run start. And again, as in the last tutorial, make sure that you're listening to both the exception and poll updated events. We're going to create a new poll and keep track of the ID. It is XWSU40. And then we're going to join with player two here. You can see this is the join player two post endpoint. And I have these different players that save their access token, but hopefully you've been following along. And so you know how this works. Then with these access tokens, I'll connect the two clients related to player one and player two. So this is socket client one. And we will connect. And then we'll connect with the socket two. 
in Redis, I'll open polls XWS. This one's from the last tutorial. And I'll see that the admin has ID HO9VD and player two has this one OLI. So the first thing I want to do is try to use player two, which is not the admin, to eject or remove player one. So let's copy this ID and we'll then send a message to the server via Postman trying to use client two to remove client one. Here we are with client two and the way you add a message is you open this new message window and I guess you could save it. Oh look, it saves there, that's nice. Can I close it? Oh, thank goodness. And then you define the message name, which in this case is remove participant. And then you can make the body text, JSON or binary. And remember that I'm passing an object with an ID field and let's paste that ID. And let's try to then remove socket one. And very good. We get a message called admin privileges required. Now why this message is unknown and not unauthorized. Let's go check. Maybe I have a typo, but in the meantime, let's take socket one now and try to remove socket two. So in Redis, let's get the ID of player two. Then back in Postman, we'll use this remove participant event and let's save it. Oh yeah. And let's paste that ID and let's send the message to remove them. And it's also getting an error because for some reason it never saves their header. <laughs> So let's add this token again in the header. I don't know why this doesn't save. I hit control S postman bug. All right, let's connect. And now let's try to again, remove this person. One thing I want to do is actually change this logger, which may help me, <laughs> but just so you know, I'm changing it. I'm not going to show this on screen. So we'll actually show the payload here. To actually be able to view the whole object, we have to add it as another argument. Now, the logical error here is actually pretty simple. Remember that we extracted a payload with this subfield. This is a standard JSON web token field to store the client's ID or user ID. And so I actually want to extract the subfield and compare that with the admin ID and not the user ID. So that's just something to note. And we'll handle the WebSocket unauthorized exception being cast into an unknown exception in a minute. So back at Postman, let's uh, maybe clear all the messages in these two sockets. I'll make sure socket one still has its token header. That's good. And uh, we'll disconnect. We'll make sure they're both disconnected. All right. And we're going to connect socket one again and then connect socket two. This may just be a replaying of previous messages. So don't worry about this. There's an actual ability where socket IO can replay old messages. So maybe we need to figure that out later. But if we go to Postman, we can see that our actual poll state is correct and that we have this these two participants. So what I wanna do first is again, from player two or client two, I want to try to remove the admin. And we'll do that here. The ID is already added and the event is remove participant. And again, we get an exception, but let's see if now client one trying to remove client two, and this is the proper ID works. You can see now that it sends remove participant up to the server and receives pull updated. And it has only that ID. So sorry about all the replaying of events. That's something built into socket IO that I wasn't aware with postman. So we may see that a little later. Now you may ask, what is the business with we're throwing an unauthorized exception and we're getting an unknown? Pretty simple. If we go to our catch all filter that we built in our exceptions a couple tutorials ago, we catch general errors. If it's a bad request exception, we sort of cast it to a WebSocket bad request exception. And otherwise, we throw an unknown exception. I think that the solution to this will be as follows. So we can add another statement to say if exception is instance of WebSocket exception. And I think we called this a WebSocket type exception, meaning we typed them. And so unknown 
exception is a version of a type exception. Then we can emit something similar to this. Or actually, we can just actually take the exception because we know it's of type WS type exception. So we can actually just copy socket.emit here, put it in there, add a space, <laughs> and then this is actually just called exception. Now, hopefully, this will work. And just so you can take a good look at it. So if it's a WebSocket type exception, we can get that exception's error and admit it. I'll make sure to add this to our tutorial notes. I haven't tried this yet. Let's see if it works. So let's connect with Socket 1. Let's try with Socket 2. Hopefully, everyone's in the poll. So let's try to remove the admin from Client 2. And we get unauthorized and then unknown. And that's because I'm a bozo and did not return. But this is actually showing that it's working as intended. Let's connect these guys again. It's a little tedious. I'm getting used to Postman with Socket.io. I think it's pretty new. And, you know, you got to do things in the right order. So let's send this. And we get unauthorized. All right. So everything seems to be working. Next time, we'll add a few more events to our polls gateway perhaps for adding nominations. Take care and enjoy your summer if you're in the Northern Hemisphere and your bleak winter if you're like down in Brazil or Argentina. Take care.